right for you, you can change it in the options menu. Okay, are you ready to move on? You've got some lessons if you want to give it a try. Open the Dirt Academy hub to get started.
Braking hard will shift the weight over the front wheels, increasing grip when steering and giving you sharper turning. Accelerating will transfer the weight back over the rear wheels, allowing you to get the power down. To flow through winding sections, use gas, braking, and steering inputs to move the car's weight around. Weight transfer is less distinct on loose surfaces, so you'll need to make stronger inputs to trigger the same effects. Don't overdo it or you'll spin. Weight transfer gives you the initial turning momentum, and the handbrake locks up the rears to start a slide. The pendulum turns lesson will put this into practice.
When you get a flat tire during a rally stage, you have two options. Stop to repair it or limp the car to the end of the stage. Sometimes driving it out is your only choice, like when you don't have a spare. And it may be faster to limp it home than to spend the time making the change. When you're driving with a flat tire, the car is going to be unstable and prone to understeer and oversteer. This can be especially problematic on two-wheel drive cars when the puncture's on a driven wheel, like when you get a rear flat on a rear-wheel drive car. When a tire goes flat, it loses its shape and it gets floppy. If you keep driving on a flat, the tire can come right off the rim or rip apart, which can lead to bigger problems. The faster you drive, the worse it is. There are a couple of signs to look out for that tell you you're driving too fast on the tire. First, you'll feel a vibration through the car that gets worse with speed. To help prolong the life of the tire, try slowing down to a speed that reduces that vibration. Second, a flat tire is noisy. That's because it's out of shape and it's rubbing in the wheel arch. Again, reducing speed can stop the noise and help keep your tire from breaking apart. Throttle control is super important, especially for rear wheel drive vehicles like this one. When accelerating at a tight turn, use partial throttle to limit oversteer and try to avoid mashing the gas until you've straightened out. Through long, fast corners, use as much gas as possible to keep your speed up, but back off to control slides when they happen. Once you're confident, apply more gas to find the car's limits and get faster.
release the brake while you're adding steering. That shifts the weight forward, allowing you to take the turn at speed. Learning to manage weight transfer will help you with more advanced techniques, like the pendulum turn. Trail braking can be a necessity if there's not enough time to brake in a straight line.
Mastering the start is an art all in itself. In rally, it's not uncommon for drivers to be separated by a tenth of a second at the end of the stage. So a good start could be the difference between winning and losing. In Rallycross and Land Rush, a fast start is even more important. If you get out front first, you'll be clear of the rest of the cars when they hit the first corner together. Turning off the automatic starts assist gives you more control on the start. For manual starts, you need to hold the handbrake while you build up your engine revs, then release it when it's time to go. By default, the clutch works automatically, so there's usually a fraction of a second delay between the time you release the handbrake and when the clutch engages. Through experience, you're going to be able to anticipate this delay and release slightly before go time, giving you a faster start off the line. You need to be confident in your ability to anticipate though, or you're going to get a penalty for jumping the start. Enabling the manual clutch gives you total control over when you engage the clutch. With practice, this is the fastest way to start, because you're going to be able to time it exactly right. But you need to be more aware of the surface you're on, because each one calls for a slightly different technique. Dry gravel requires the least precision. Dumping the clutch spins the wheels, digging you into the ground where you should find traction right away. Wet conditions can be a little tricky because you might find mud under your wheels that doesn't offer much grip, so you'll want to go easier on the clutch. Tarmac requires you to feed in the clutch progressively, since the shock of dumping the clutch can damage the drivetrain. Snow also requires a different approach. Too much clutch and you'll be spinning your wheels. So allow the car to roll forward slowly to establish grip and then feed in the clutch to gain speed and avoid wheel spin. On long straightaways like this, climb up through the gears to get the fastest speed possible. For long sweeping turns, downshift before you turn in. Take the next two tight turns in first, accelerating into second between them. Timing your gear changes is critical. Watch for wheel spin and don't shift up too soon. Work your way back up the gears, shift down for the first turn and again for the next one. When you've got better traction on a paved surface, you can move through the gears faster. Drop to second, the final turn. Manual transmission mode enables full control over your gears, allowing you to explore effects like engine braking. Be wary of wheel spin causing your engine to rev too high. If you shift up too early, you'll find it difficult to build speed. You'll be able to accelerate faster on pavement when you've got better grip.
all-wheel drive car, you're going to be fighting understeer. Focus on conserving momentum by getting your braking done in a straight line before turning and using the gas to pull you through the turn. Through slower sections, the steering is responsive because your driven wheels are also the ones that are doing the steering. When you're dealing with oversteer, try to resist overcorrecting because you might turn the wheels too far and suddenly snap the car around the other way. Instead, point the wheels where you want to go and floor it. The rear wheels are gonna follow the front. When you're comfortable, you can save it from spinning. Why not try initiating a little oversteer with the handbrake through a few turns to practice? drive cars have a tendency to oversteer when you're on throttle, so controlling your inputs is crucial to maintaining stability. If you feel the car is understeering through tight turns, you can give it more gas to bring the back end around, but be ready to countersteer. Avoid heavy weight transfer because it can be hard to recover from a slide without totally losing momentum. Try to keep your drifts to shallow angles and carefully manage your inputs to control the amount of oversteer.
drive gives you traction at all four corners of the car, so you can approach turns at higher speeds and throw the car in more aggressively. Don't be afraid to get on throttle earlier through a corner to maximize your speed. You're more likely to face understeer than oversteer because your front wheels are driven. So think about weight transfer when you throw the car into a corner and manage your gas and brake to control the angle.
looser surfaces, the car is going to change direction slower and slide more before regaining traction. Adjust your racing line to compensate for conditions. To regain traction when the car is sliding, try to balance the throttle to limit wheel spin and regain traction on a loose surface. When you're sideways, you can adjust your slip angle with the gas and the brakes. traction on a paved surface compared to a loose one. Try to push as hard as you can using smooth, sweeping racing lines to maintain speed through the turn. A little bit of tire squeal is a good sign that you're pushing the car to its limits, but if you feel the wheels starting to slide, try to ease off. Keep a smooth line. Sometimes you can make up time by skipping over the apex, but watch what's under your wheels. Obstacles like curves can unsettle the car. Quick jab of the handbrake can break traction and help get you around tight hairpins.
automatically fitted with studded snow tires, so it's going to feel like you're on gravel. You're going to encounter a mix of snow surfaces and a variety of grip levels, but the distribution of the grip tends to be more uniform across the width of the road than you'll find with gravel. A typical snow surface features a layer of snow over ice, gravel, or tarmac. Your tires are going to naturally sink into the snow, making a big roost behind the car. A buildup of snow against the side of the tire gives you some resistance to slides and the illusion of a grippier surface. That resistance will subtly slow your forward motion, too. You'll also find patches of compacted snow, a much harder surface the tire doesn't sink into. It's going to feel like it has less grip, but it's actually faster. When you hit slushy snow, you'll see the color of the underlying road surface showing through the racing line. Grip's going to be inconsistent across the road as you transition between slush and snow, so your best bet is to stick to the worn tracks whenever you can. Built up along the side of the road are the famous Swedish snowbanks. You gotta watch out, because they'll grab the car if you hit them too hard, and that'll be the end of your rally. But you can use them, too. If you drag the tail of your car through them, they'll help keep you straight on corner exits. Careful, though. There's a fine line between brushing the bank and digging in, which makes this one of the most advanced snow driving techniques you can master. Throughout your career, weather is going to play a huge part in your successes and your failures. You'll experience sun, rain, mist, fog, and snow, all with varying degrees of intensity. The characteristics of the track service are going to change from stage to stage, and sprawling vistas suddenly change from beautiful scenery to deadly sheer drops hidden behind a thick layer of fog. Each condition demands your respect and requires a different approach to driving. Sunny conditions give you the best visibility of the track ahead, and if it hasn't rained recently, the surface will also be dry. In rally, push hard when it's sunny and dry to make up for time lost in wet conditions or to gain an advantage if the weather changes. In rallycross and land rush, visibility can actually be worse due to the dust and debris kicked up from dry, loose surfaces. Try different lines to avoid getting lost in your opponent's dust. Wet conditions reduce grip levels and, depending on how heavy it's raining, can impact visibility. In Rally, put your faith in your co-driver in low visibility conditions and adjust your attack to compensate for the reduced grip. In Rallycross and Land Rush, visibility will be better on loose surfaces, but settled water on pavement is going to cause a lot of spray. Fog is only a consideration in Rally. When it occurs, it can severely reduce your visibility and it'll test the trust between you and your co-driver. Keep an eye out for any obstacles beyond your co-driver's control, like stranded cars, and consider taking it slightly easier in these conditions if you can. Snow is exclusive to Sweden, and it's one of the most challenging surfaces you can drive. Your car's going to be surprisingly capable in its snow setup, but the snow banks and overplow at the side of the road can be punishing if you get offline. Managing wheel spin with careful throttle control is key to maintaining traction. If snow is falling as you drive, visibility can be a challenge, so consider when to push and when to play it safe. Driving a night stage can be one of the toughest challenges in rally. With corners and obstacles obscured by darkness until the lights pick them up at the last second, you need to put your complete trust in your co-driver to continue to post fast stage times. Supporting your main headlights, an additional light pod is attached to your car for night stages. This casts a far stronger beam, adding a lot of illumination to the road ahead. It's important you don't damage your lights during the stage, otherwise you'll find yourself in pitch black in the middle of nowhere. If there's no service area before a night stage, be careful where you put the front of the car. Any serious damage could also prevent the light pod from working when it's attached. If you do have damaged lights when you get to the service area, check the event details to determine if there's a night stage coming up. If there is, your lights can be repaired by fixing the body lights component in the service area. Your crew chief will also prioritize your lights if you ask him for his recommendations.
negotiate corners that come immediately after jumps, you need to make sure you're at the right speed before takeoff. So, I'm heading straight toward the jump. I'm watching my speed, and I'm making sure I can land in the right place to take the corner without hitting the red markers. line and anticipate your speed. Watch out that you don't hit the water too hard or it could really tear up your car. through the corner for higher cornering speeds. Negative camber is when the road surface is sloped away from the inside of the corner. This naturally tries to force the car away from the apex, pushing you wide, so you want to use lower speeds. Your co-driver will warn you with an off-camber call. In isolation, camber or off-camber corners are pretty easy to deal with, but when they're combined in a sequence of turns, it can be tricky, especially when you're on a road with crown in the middle and you get both types together. Be careful, because if you get on the wrong side of it, the car can become unstable. Good car positioning is the key to getting the most out of each type of camper. By completing your induction at the Dirt Academy, you've earned your first license. This has given you access to regional rally events over in Michigan, where you can start your career. 